crankcase evacuation, which is also called crankcase breather or block breather. It's the way to relieve the pressure buildup. This way, it doesn't create too much winding because your engine already makes power. It's just that the horsepower, some of it is consumed by the windage by spinning the engine and turning it. So rather than being able to feel it through the tires, it's consumed somewhere else and also give you more ideas on how to unleash more power and of course some awesome visuals to show you guys or to help visualize what i'm talking about we will include boxer engines like the vw beetle subaru and porsche this way it just covers the whole thing or the whole subject about crankcase evacuation but of course inline fours that goes for 4ag 4g63 and sr20 so hey if you're ready to unleash more power or release more hidden horsepower from your engine, you know this is something you're gonna watch over and over again. Okay, let's start off with this picture as you guys remember this. Here is the oil drain up in the exhaust, then the intake, and then there's also on the corners. So when you think about it, when the oil or the, when the head is get, gets filled with oil, this is also filled with oil draining down to the block. And the reason why I mentioned this is because that's also where the crankcase pressure escapes from the block. Here, it goes up from the block up to the up to the head this way when you think about it when you put a breather on the valve cover yes it helps but when it's overfilled with oil going down the drain it may not totally let the crankcase or block breathe well so this is also why we always run a breather block or a block fitting as a breather to the block and it's here on a B20, this is plugged, so we actually remove it and install a breather fitting. This way, it breathes easier or it breathes better. Now, let me show you the B-roll. This is of episode 6 of the B20 VTEC series that we did. And you can click by the end of this video because we're going to put the playlist there. Here, this is the drain from the head back to the block. The drain for the oil, of course. And then you, when you look at the back, there's also two. But the difference is out of the back, there's a block fitting, a plug fit fitting, actually. And here, we're going to show you. You can see here at the back, oh, that's the Golden Eagle cam gear, of course. Here, on a B20 block, this is an Allen fitting. We remove this and actually tighten or put in a block fitting that you can you know connect the hose to into the breather box this way cranky pressure gets to breathe out even if the oil drain is filled with oil draining back down because that happens whenever you're above 5,000 rpm you know and here it is we're showing you the playlist at the end of this video on the end screen is gonna have all the b series builds including all of the episodes of this series so you know you don't have to rush wait until the end of the video here we go we're putting the block fitting that we had custom made but you know you can order this online that's quite easy and you can actually put two and also on the vtech block it has a breather box at the back, but that's mainly for positive crankcase ventilation that works on idle, uh, actually really good on idle. That's the drain, and yes, the ports are nice on this B20 VTEC, okay? 
This is one way of getting the block breather or relieving pressure from the crankcase that's developing as you rev higher. And the reason why I mentioned this is because back in the day in Honda Tech, Tony Palo did some data logging of his runs with a uh, Integra and the more he added a uh, breather fitting on the block the closer it got to ideal take note the closer it got to ideal meaning you can never run too ma too many breather fittings on the block because it just simply needs more space and here's why but before that Tony Palo actually the story is back in the day in Honda Tech he actually made the thread about what name he should use or do for his shop because he he was starting a shop. So there was too many suggestions and you know, Tony's, Tony's one big palo was one I couldn't forget because it was so funny. But in the end, someone suggested or he realized why not just use his Honda Tech username T1. So that's why it became T1 Race Development. And you know, he came from this, and I love this Integra, by the way. And of course, now he's still as crazy as before, but with the GTR. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And another trivia T1 was the first one to actually make this kind of breather box. Yes, I'm sure other people was making it or fabricating it, but this specific way and the fittings was started by him because as he data logged it needed more and more breather from the crankcase and of course another one is this he was the first to do a hood exit downpipe which is probably called an up pipe now right and when you look when you think about it everyone now does this including all motor right so props to t1 race development or Tony's one big palo. Kidding, guys. That was just hilarious when someone posted that in the forums and I was laughing my, you know. All right. To visualize better what I'm trying to say, let's see here. Let's see. It's number one, two, three, and four. Okay. You got to remember this pistons because the numbers, I mean, because when we're trying to identify it, we got to remember which one is one, two, and three, and four. All right. You got it? Okay trying to explain this ahead of time so that when the graphic starts moving you already know okay when you think about it because there's volume or area underneath the crankcase be, be below the pistons as long as there's volumetric area there's air so as the pistons goes down it pushes air below beneath it to the other areas that it can take that's what's causing the windage loss okay here let's look at it and so now we can visualize it. Look, as pistons one and four goes down, it pushes the volume of air beneath it towards two and three. And sure, two and three is going up, so that makes it okay, right? But the higher RPM you go, the harder it is for the air to move. Like for example, here you can see, as pistons two and three pushes down on the compression or yeah, on the power stroke, the air beneath it is pushed out into one and four which is fine right but as one and four pulls down it also pushes it pushes it back to the same place so when you think about it anything above 5000 rpm this is just too abrupt this is why some people say it's an oil mist because imagine with the oil spray and all that that is like a fog a fog of oil and that is part of the windage loss or the windage loss because the engine makes power, but in order for it to make a full rotation, there's a bunch of load that it has to fight through. And that's power that's already getting hidden. And that is also why on turbo, it's a lot worse because the acceleration rate is really, really fast. So this is more crucial on turbo and not on the valve cover because it's still coming from the crankcase. So imagine how many seconds it takes faster to rev from 5,000 to redline on a turbo. That's probably just like two seconds compared to a natural aspirated motor, right? So that's more crucial. And then of course, eventually when you start doing 
starting to have a little blow by here and there after some wear it gets worse and worse and that is why this is really worth talking about because it's that important the windage loss here is actually quite significant and you know that is why on dry sump motor this is all, almost all free power because they run on vacuum and that's really really good in my book and even on the motorbikes they all are compartmentalized so this is less of an issue except for us it's a little harder on a single overhead cam but still possible you know and boxer engines are not exempted here's an example a VW Beetle boxer engine. So we got the piston one, two, and then three and four on the other side. And as you can see, as piston one and two goes to top dead, it pulls air from the rear from two and four. So, and then when two and four goes up to top dead center, it pushes back in. So when you think about it, it's like it's pushing air back and forth. So as the RPM goes up, this gets heavier and harder for the engine to turn. This is why ventilation is important. And here's another animation of the VW engine, which actually looks good in my book. And the thing here is, even in Subaru, the four-cylinder flat four, it has the same potential issues. Because when you think about it, even their number three main bearing is their problem, right? So it doesn't change on this. And the the funny or the interesting part is Porsche managed to change and uh, managed to prolong the number three bearing because they simply ran a flat six. They added two cylinders. So when you think about it, number three bearing or the center main is actually a lot wider because there's two of them. And also Porsches run a dry sump. So they actually have a vacuum you know, uh, happening underneath the crankies because of the dry sump. So this solves a lot of the possible windage loss. So that is why it performs great. And you know, we can do that on a VW Beetle, but it kind of costs to just run a dry sump. But you know what, to be honest, eventually when I build my two liter VW, I actually do plan to run a dry sump. So, hey, and you know, there are tricks to in increasing or actually helping the movement of air underneath the crankcase and look at this in the beetle stuff this is from john maher racing guys from the uk and here is the inside of the vw case and you remember the air moves back and forth so here you clean up those these areas just to alleviate the pressure or make it easier for the air to travel in including the oil drain and even the mp case brochure they talk about that look that window is ported really well or you can actually port it better so that it smooths out here's the window look it can take or it can do a little bit more touch-ups right and here's the vw engine this is why i like this a lot and what's interesting is look an aircraft engine using the vw beetle engine crazy right but here's more what i prefer a street engine and as i mentioned before we were planning to start doing headers we plan to do this but with a different collector for the vw and of course like hondas we will continuously develop the exhaust on different collectors but i think the burn style collector is gonna work its best but that's after we do the project and you know what the tricks that john maher racing shares on the vw crankcase you know on our Honda block, there's a lot of tricks to do or you can do like that to alleviate better pressure transfer or, you know, windage efficiency or wind to lessen the windage loss. And that's one of the main things that, you know, I keep to myself. And, you know, it's something that you can study and eventually understand what tricks you can do. And even Skunk 2's old videos on their k-series they actually showed this they were deburring certain areas hey for what for efficiency right it's good and as many of you know me or realized by now that eventually we will start sharing what 
we we are talking about on one episode or the other on or in each segments but for now you can click up here for the positive crankcase ventilation video because this and that is connected or interconnected so it helps you understand better and of course after that the piston rings video because you know when you think about it with blow by or without blow by crankcase ventilation is really really important and of course ultimately the end screen after this video will have the playlist of the b-series builds that includes what we talked about earlier and you can also click here for the volumetric efficiency video because in order to achieve that you gotta be doing this ventilation here and you know what we made it so you can click here for that